Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 21st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This week and next week, of course, I hope uh, many of you do get to take a couple of days off and we'll have only three podcasts this week as well as next week. So no po- podcast on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day as well as on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Unless, of course, we have something interesting and new happening. And with that, uh, we're sort of planning a little bit on a summary about the solar winds event, a little bit an update. If you have any specific questions about this event or anything that uh, you would like to have covered in more detail, uh, please uh, let us know. And I expect we'll probably do something uh, next week. But well, just about a year ago, we did have the Citrix vulnerability keeping us busy over New Year's and Jan took a closer look at how organizations are doing patching this vulnerability. Looks like we only got actually a couple hundred systems left according to Shodan that are still vulnerable and who knows how many of them are actually honeypots. So only 4.5% of the originally infected systems are still exposed, which actually is pretty good. Of course, this vulnerability was pretty much exploited instantly which made it a high priority item for people to fix and in some cases at hackers who took over systems may have either patched the vulnerability or turned the systems unreachable. And one neat feature of Process Explorer, which comes as part of Sys internals, is the ability to have a binary that you find running that you may consider suspicious check with virus total. So in this case, sys internals does calculate a hash of the particular binary and then sends it off to virus total. Sadly, looks like the last couple days that this functionality is not working. Maybe an issue here with virus total, maybe sort of a change in the API or such. But this appears to be more problem with Virus Total than with Process Explorer at this point. And off and on, there is a lot of talk about the need of governments uh, to intercept encrypted communication, while larger governments typically tend to pressure more uh, the high tech industry for solutions. Smaller governments are taking sort of a little bit simpler uh, paths uh, to intercepting communication, like, for example, Kazakhstan, which recently required, again, uh, citizens to install a particular certificate authorities. Browser makers have now stepped in and specifically are declaring this particular certificate authority used by Kazakhstan as insecure. So even if you happen to install it in your operating system, in your browser, it will not be recognized as valid. And security company Positive Technologies took another look at 5G. Now, earlier this year, they looked at the Diameter Protocol and the GDP Protocol, which is sort of part of 5G. Now, they looked at HTTP2, which is used for some messaging in 5G, and also PFCP. PFCP is essentially the protocol that uh, does forward packets uh, between providers, the packet forwarding control protocol. And that's, of course, always tricky because this is now where uh, different providers essentially have to trust each other. The research pretty much uh, confirms that uh, you probably shouldn't trust a 5G connection anymore than you trust an LTE, a 3G, an edge or a Wi-Fi connection for that matter, use your VPNs wisely. And for all the Java developers out there, the Bouncy Castle crypto library did patch an important vulnerability in Bcrypt. This could be leading to an authentication bypass in particular, since uh, Bcrypt is often used for password hashing and the password hashing implementation of Bcrypt is vulnerable. 
And exploitation essentially would make brute forcing a lot easier in the tests by Synopsys who found a vulnerability. They were able to essentially bypass authentication in 20% of tested passwords within 1000 attempts. So as an added layer, uh, probably some lockout feature would give you an additional margin here to prevent any exploitation. Well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.